came out in 95, right? September of 1995 is when NOLA was released. Yep. You know, there's a lot of rumors, I guess, or talks about this super group band that all you guys were in, Bill, Pepper, Kirk, Jimmy, and they were just, you guys, there wasn't that much information out there that I could find. It was before really the internet, you know, like Metal right, Maniacs right. had a few things in their columns about it. I'll tell you what we did. We recorded that first demo in 1992. And we all took a copy. I went back to Texas. Jim was in New Orleans with Kirk, but he was all touring and shit like that. So, and Pepper went back to North Carolina with COC. And we all did shows and we toured the world separately. And we turned everyone on to this freaking demo, you know, all of our friends, all of our musician friends and anyone that would like black sabbath you know and there was a lot of rumblings there was one time i remember being in new york at cbgb's i forgot who was playing i was talking to the sound guy there and whatever we were shooting the shit i had the down demo on me and i was like yeah man pop this in and he cranked it like five times in a row it was only three or four songs he cranked it like five times in a row, man, at CBGB. So people heard it, you know? So cool the way things spread back then, but minus the internet. And, oh, know, it's that, way a lot, cool. A lot to be said for word of mouth or getting a cassette in the mail. It, it's really hard to find. I don't know. I'm, I'm 52 years old, but it's really hard for me to, like, find a band and, like, ride over to Phil's house and be like, dude, you never heard these dudes check them out. You know, it's like, it's just different now. Instant gratification comes with a price. And that price tag is fucking appreciation. So unpersonal. We sound like old men, but still. We are old men, Jimmy. We are old men. Very true. You know, I had waited at least two to three years to hear any of the music that Down made. Because I wasn't in New York at CB's when he played the demo. You know, you wore the shirt, the down shirt, lots of photos in the This Love music video. Um, wow. So it was just anticipating hearing what it actually sounded like. I had no idea what it would actually sound like until I bought the CD from the record store, put it in my car. It was awesome. It's still one of my all-time favorite records. It's really weird. When we when we wrote those first three songs that day, I remember in, my, in our friend's garage, it uh, personally, you could tell that those songs were going to be like classic songs. That's not being egotistical. It was just, it was really fresh and different. There was, you know, nobody, I don't know. It was just a real special thing to be involved in, you know. How did it come about? How did you guys start down? Oh, I mean, just me and oh, Jimmy you... and, and Pepper and it was us three. And it was like, uh, let's put a fucking killer band together and play music like black sabbath witchfinder general saint vitus trouble you know let let's let's homage those great bands and um yeah at first we were deep, you know, deeply when, into those it was kirk that was like my first thought of you know a double guitar player because he was or a second guitar player not a double guitar player the second guitar player, because he was a guitar player, uh, what was it, Slugs at the time? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, man, it made too much sense, and that's why we got Big T to play bass, because he was in the Slugs. And so were you. Yeah, I Wait, was in it too. It yeah. was the Slugs, and me and Pepper joined the Slugs. That's what happened. I remember being, uh, I think it was at Soundgarden at Tipitina's. I remember we were all there and Phil, I remember you coming up to me going, dude, we got a name for the band. And I was like, what? And he was like, in perfect Phil fashion, you know, he's like, looked at me like, down. And I, I just, I just remember it was cool. You know, I was like, dude, that's gonna rule. So if Kirk was in the slugs, when you guys formed down, this was pre Crowbar? This was before Crowbar mm -hmm. existed. Yes, it was around it was around ninety ninety one when we got together for the first time. Crowbar started when I moved to Atlanta for a year, and when I did, I quit Crowbar, and that's when they got Craig Nudemacher and and changed the name of the band and everything. So it was just the Slugs just turned into Crowbar. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So ninety ninety one is when Down formed, and that's when you guys recorded the first demo too, the three four yeah, songs. Correct. 
That was ninety one. Yeah, ninety one. Gotcha. And we didn't do, we didn't do the it took took us four more years to do the record. You know. What were the first four songs on the demo? It was three three songs. We did "Losing All," "Temptations," "Wings," and "Bury Me in Smoke" in one day. All three were written one jam session. I, wow. I still get goosebumps thinking about it because I've never been in any other band where I've written three songs of that caliber in one day. Yeah, I had to catch a plane. I think Pepper had to catch a flight. I was heading back home, man, and it all just came together real natural. And I was going to say earlier, you know, I guess it, the, with the attitude of heavy metal back in the early, early 90s, even I'll just say the attitude still of the late 80s, really, you know, with all the bands that we've been through, you know, there was a lot of exploration and there might even be, in a simplified way, a lot of busy stuff. I think with Down, and I mean musically, even vocally too, you know, a lot of, I, I'm having a hard time saying it, but I guess uh, just more uh, involved stuff that we had been, each of us had been a part of, but with Down, we wanted to write big songs, big anthems, right. big, big songs. So that was the focus. And hey, those songs are pretty big. The first three. I just remember, oh. I remember Phil, Phil and Pepper were both like touring worldwide at this, at this time. Like, and I, I don't know, I just, uh, I mean, we were all real good friends and everything, but I just remember like, dude, I'm going to be in a band, I'm band with people that actually tour and do stuff, you know? And oh. so we're definitely, that, I'm reiterating what Phil said about the songs we wrote. That that was my attitude as well. It was like, wow, we're going to write like epic songs and stuff, you know? How did the the next four years before before you guys recorded Nola go, like writing think, that material? Think about my life. What records? Yeah. You know, I was busy, man. I was doing 300 gig a year Pantera runs. And you know, there was no time. There was just, it was just a timing thing and uh, nothing more at that point. You know, it's like, I think everybody in down at that point was dying to get back any which way the soonest time possible. And Pepper was super busy with corrosion. So, you know, that was it, man. It's not like we didn't want to get back. We definitely did. Yeah, and again, it was a different time, too. It's not like you guys could be sending digital audio tracks back and forth to write material. Did you guys all have to get together to finish writing the, the album? First, first three jam sessions were all four-track, eh, Jim? Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. We did That's them at, that. at this in friend of ours' garage, and they sounded amazing. They, they really did, you know? Do we need to release those one day, man? The rest of the songs, the first three songs um, happened in 91, but the rest of the songs, did they happen in just a couple more jam sessions? You guys got together and wrote the rest of the album? Like everyone had bits and came in and put it together? What was I the, think the, second, the second demo? Oh, was dude. The to the South? What I, was um, it? No, because it's when we went to a festival in, in was it Kimmer. Lifer? It, was, it was Lifer. Uh, I want to say Hail the Leaf, and it wasn't Rehab. That was one of the last ones. Maybe Swan Song. Eyes of the South was actually written when we jammed with Shauna. I remember that. I remember she that. Came, she came up with the bass line. She was like, dude, dude, dude. It was just like a jam. Shauna from White Zombie. Shauna, you zoned. Mm -hmm. we, we, it was like three different writing sessions, you know? And because we could only do it when Phil would come into town. He was so busy with Pantera and he wasn't living in New Orleans at that time. So when he would come in, we would do it, you know. And didn't we write some stuff at your house? Your jail. You we wrote jail at the yeah, house. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you moved back home in the course of writing. Yeah, I like 94, I moved back. 93. 93, I moved back, yes. That makes so, sense then, you know. Well, yeah, and I was thinking about... Us, me moving back and what we wrote at the house. And I know it was jail, but I know it was another one too. And it might've been, you know what? We might've started with Shauna out at the, the Chalmette jam room, out at the Araby. 
sheds with eyes of the south and i think we finished it up i know we did we finished it up at my house yeah i remember that makes Kurt sense. writing the whole second part <coughs> or whoever did rehab rehab was like a last minute was it i think I that's think. another one of them. i had that riff forever oh pillars pillars was in that second session that oh. we did remember the studio with the video games and stuff yeah, I remember it vaguely. I remember I went into an actual vocal booth to do my vocals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, releasing those demos would, to me, would be be something really cool. I think the fans would really get a kick out of it, you know? Hey, Jim, I know. Do, you have, I would. do you have that second demo or the third I don't have. No. I might have it the might... first demo. No, I, Pepper probably does. There's that video of us... Uh, writing temptations wings that mike savoy put together there's a video of us that was that first writing session some of those videos are good hey who put was yeah. that mike savoy who did the actual losing all video yeah it's temptations was, i thought man or whatever it was yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh uh, we should release that shit too man when you guys recorded nola how long did you guys spend in the studio working on it yeah, all the songs were ready to go by that point. Well, we had drum some interesting stuff happen. We had we started the drum tracks, and then boom, out of nowhere, big ass flash flood hit New Orleans. The studio got freaking washed out. Jimmy's drums were floating around. Um, and they had to redo the place. How long did that take, Jim? Before we got back in. It was. It took about a month. We had one song left to do. We were doing "Bury Me in Smoke," the very end. Like it, I swear, it seemed like I went black to black, do do do, and the lights went down. Thirty minutes later, you were knee deep in water, and uh, yeah, like Phil said, they had to drain the studio, and it was still like rafters and stuff when we came back in. We had to redo that one song and on drums, and then they would do. They did guitars, bass, vocals, yada yada. And Matt Thomas from the Crowbar at the yep. time, he produced the record. But who was that engineer? Dave what? Dave. Oh, I forget his last name. Cool dude. Uh, and that was that was a studio. His his normal clientele was like Dr. John, Alan Toussaint, like bands like that. You know, it's like we picked the best studio we could find in New Orleans to do it. And it just so happened a lot of heavy hitters from New Orleans, not our style of music, would record there as well. So it must have been a little odd for him to put up with us when we came in. I guess it might have been fun. I guess it was. He did great. There's no way you play playing to a click on that album, are you, Jimmy? No, no way, no way at all. So much feel on that record. It's thank you, man. Thank you. Now that down I, and wiper. One thing, one thing about down that never really in any other band, as far as on drums, Phil Phil helped me out a lot. You know, he was like. I wish I wish he could have been there when we're doing the drum tracks because like me and Kirk or me, Kirk and Pepper alone, but Phil was directing me through. And he's like, all right, man, do something cool. So it was a complete improv, like da, 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 boom, you know, and he just it was a total trust thing, you know. Like he would just tell me, all right, this is coming up, do this, you know. And uh it was really interactive. It was cool. I don't do that in any other band, you know. And was that kind of was Nola? One, like really the first time you guys had really played in a band like that together? Yeah. Was was for me, yeah. So that was the first kind of introduction to your guys' work and relationship and music as far as like playing in bands together and doing all the stuff you guys have done together over the years. I think everybody everybody in down at, at that time had respect for each other's playing and, and was a fan of each other. And, you know, and I don't know, I don't know not, nothing against what our other band, perspective bands at the time, but it was straight up fun. You know, it was like really, really fun. And for, for me, you know, to, to be able to be in a band with Pap and Phil and Kirk, I already was in a band with Kirk, but to, to do what we were doing was really new and interesting, you know? And like Phil said, a great way to show people what we were influenced by, you know? And uh, I'll, I'll just say it was superbly fun for me too i mean fuck i was in pantera 
you know? So that to me, all right, if you want to think about it the way I was thinking about it or the way I deduce it, Pantera would be Judas Priest, Down would be like me singing for Black Sabbath or, or uh, Trouble or something like that, you know? Something like that. Even though I do approach Down vocals way different than, I don't know, most, most guys in the genre who do, you know, doomy type stuff. Uh, I try and, I don't know, be soulful, you know, slick and soulful, you know? There's definitely yeah, different gonna, vocals for you. Definitely. The whole record's a monster, but vocally, I hate saying it, but I think it's your best recorded performance, Phil. Like, there's so much feeling in it, and it's so soulful, but brutal. Like, the singing and the screaming mixed together, like, you did it in Pantera, but when I heard Nola, I, that was a whole other thing. Like, I hadn't heard the intensity of the vocals mixed with that soulful feeling that I, that until I heard that down record. And I don't think I've heard anything since, really. It's different like that because, you know, once again, with Pantera, it was very uniform, heavy metal, you know, always, always. Heavy metal was the most important element, you know. And with down, you know, there was all of a sudden, I guess I could draw from a deeper well of influences and I could touch on different things. So, you know, once again, fun, challenging, and very youthful. That uh, singing that first down record, that is young man's fucking work, man. I'll say that. Woo! And shit is, it's challenging for sure. Was there anything going on in, in your life or anything with that recording specifically that you that it came out that way? You know what dawns on me is when we wrote those songs, that was before I was injured. So that's a big psychological thing right there. I think yeah. towards the when we finally recorded it, Jim, in 95, I was totally injured. And I remember that. And I remember being in the studio talking with Little Daddy. Him and uh, Pumpkin were there. And the little daddy, by the way, is Joey Lacaz. Rest in peace. Drummer for I Hate God. But um, he was there because he did uh, all, a lot of the percussion along with Jim on jail. You know, that was Jim and Joey and all the rest of us, too. But they were in the forefront when we recorded jail, you know. So I remember all that stuff. That was an awesome vibe, too, man. We turned off all the lights in the studio I, was that the last thing we recorded jim i think so yeah me, yeah me too so i think so uh, you know we had real candles going so sabbed out man oh vibed up man it was awesome yeah yeah is there anything else you guys want to add about down about nola about that album 25 years right man 26 now because you guys were going to tour on it before COVID started right there's going to be some NOLA shows happening NOLA specific down shows I think there were a handful of them and yeah COVID Ace festivals that. as well yeah yeah I think uh, the Vegas show was the only one that we hung on to so I mean if I could say anything else about down it's it's damn near close to the band that we always said you know it could be because we always said to each other this is a type of band we can grow old in. you know I, I guess the sentiment is not wrong but once again i'm going to remind you going back and singing album one and two that shit is hard man so i might have to the older i get i might have to improvise a little bit or not. Or I could just shut up and fucking sing the goddamn songs. It's just, it's for me, it's hard to believe it's been 25 years. It seems like yesterday and feels like long. Yeah, kidding. it does. It does actually. <laughs> it, it really I mean to to and to be a part of that record, it's like a big a big thing for me. I say it all the time, and definitely one of the most important records I've ever played on in my life, you know. So I'll say this. That song in particular, you reminded me when you brought up Lifer. 
that song, I always send it out to Dimebag and Vince. But I will say this show, I'm going to send it out to a brother of ours that passed away not but less than a month ago. Freaking Hollis, man. Good yeah. dude, man. Uh, sweet, sweetheart. Young dude who was at every freaking hardcore show, metal show, whatever. He was always there. Very supportive. A staple of the scene. He was a big, big guy. I wouldn't have brought this up if it wasn't important, Jim. That was an awesome dude, man. Well-known yeah, staple he, of New Orleans scene. He, he sang for the band Fat, Stupid, Ugly People from New Orleans. He sure did. Every scene has a Hollis, you know? It's it, yep. And, uh, you know, it, it, like somebody that's that, that important. And like Phil said, he's a beautiful soul, beautiful person. And uh, it's just... Yeah, it's terrible that he's gone. That's a nice way to immortalize someone or just pay homage to the memory. That's oh, nice. for sure. You guys want to wrap it up? When can we expect the covers album? When do you think that's going to happen? I'm waiting I'm on sure, them. I'm sure we'll start working on it after after the live stream and, and Psycho Fest is over with, you know? Start getting in the room and... Because no, no better thing than momentum, you know? Agreed. Any last thoughts on Nola? I think Jimmy Jimmy summed, summed it up with uh, probably one of the most important records we've ever done. Yeah. Out of That's any band we're in, you know? Yeah. Agreed.